Hey, how was your weekend? Thanks for returning to my channel. For first timers, uh, I'm an author and I have a little book called You Are Taller Over the Phone. You'll find how to get it in the links uh, below. Just scroll down into uh, just above the comment section. Uh, I can also be found on all platforms um, besides YouTube, including Telegram. So I'll look for those links as well. So we're uh, in part two of our move and we've stumbled across now the topic of dating a widow, which is a very interesting topic. So um, I'm talking a, a literal death, not a figurative death, although those are just as important, um, I believe. So let's just get started, okay? So first I want to define the difference between a widow and a widower. In ancient English, uh, the masculine and feminine was distinguished, and, but because of the root word widow, it just, both of them merged into one. So, the term widower first occurred in the 14th century simply to disambiguate the term widow. So, now we have widow and we have widow were. So, widow is the feminine, which means it's a woman who lost a husband, and then the widower is, of course, is the male counterpart who lost a wife. But you didn't know that, huh? We all sort of said widow at one point, or widower, not thinking there was a masculine and a feminine. Which is unusual for the English language, actually. So, we're pretty gender neutral even now, and getting more so every week, it seems like. Alright, first question. How long should a widow or widower wait until after their spouse has passed away? I say one year. We need four seasons. Now remember, there's no rules. So some may feel ready after six months, some may not feel ready until five years. But I say, give it one year. Give it 365 days and four distinct seasons. Because look, the first year you got, it's all firsts. First birthday, first, um, I guess, uh, wedding anniversary right? Um, first anniversary of the maybe the accident or the date of uh, death. First um, time you experience the anniversary of the funeral. Um, all the first holidays, children's birthdays. Look, it all happens in the first year, those first, 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 and you get overwhelmed with firsts. And they're navigating through all those emotions. And it's just best that you don't get involved during that first. Okay, the seconds, look, that's a whole nother video, okay? Uh, why is it so hard to date a widower or a widow? It's hard. Trust me. It, it, believe me, it has challenges. Um, for one thing, it's a social awkwardness. There may, there may be some reticence about being seen in public uh, for fear that their community will arrive at the opinion that they didn't love their spouse if they're dating too quickly. So, I mean, there's all kinds of perceptions that people are concerned about, and, and that changes one's ability to relate in a normal fashion, free and clear. So, look for those. So, that bring, brings me to uh, the next topic, and that is the signs uh, to look for that the widower or widow is serious about a new relationship. Okay, first of all, they're not going to pressure be pressured to sleep with anybody. And he's willing to talk freely and openly about his past relationship and yours. Um, also, he doesn't belabor the experience of the loss. He, there's a time and place to grieve, and that's maybe in a, in a grieving group, a religious group, or the like, with a therapist alone. Um, Please don't be his therapist. Be sensitive, but there's a time and place to continue the grief process if that's what the, the surviving spouse chooses to do. All right, he doesn't let the grief get in the way. All right, I wanna share with you uh, a few tips. All right, when you're interested in someone who just experienced loss and they've gone through all uh, four seasons, and you're ready to go on dates two, three, and maybe even beyond. Number one, there's gonna, there's actually literally a hundred of them, but I just wanted to share with you the top five, okay? Gather more information. 
find out how the spouse died. That's going to give you some idea of what you're getting into. Okay, look, we know it can go anywhere from cancer to murder, car accident. <sighs> also, know that not all grief is alike. All right. Make sure that they've gone through all five stages of the Kubler-Ross stages of grief. Okay, look that up. Kubler-Ross stages of grief. There's five stages. Actually, arguably, there's six. The sixth one is actually re-engagement. Are they ready to get back into the lane, the life lane? It's really important that they've experienced all five stages of grief to some degree. They don't necessarily have to complete it, and a lot of times people go through those cycles many times, but know them and be aware of them. And know that the relationship, their prior marriage or commitment really never goes away. It's in their brains, it's in their hearts, it's probably in their DNA, it's in their children, never goes away. So be prepared to share that space with them, that spiritual space and possibly physical space, because you know they're going to have a lot of mementos still around them. Photographs in their phone, pictures on the wall. Um, look, the list can go on and on and on. I want you to know some red flags as well. If they're too anxious for you to meet their friends and family. Hold on, I'll get that. That's probably my ex. Hi, John, how are you? No, I, I wasn't right in the middle of anything. Uh, do, am, I, am I free Saturday? Well, um, look, look, I'm really flattered that you want to date me again, um, but I, I'm going to have to pass. Um, I'm not available anymore, and uh, but I really appreciate it. And I really hope we can stay friends, though. Okay? All right. You have a great day. Bye. Look, occasionally that does happen. You know, when you leave somebody or they leave you, years later they want you back. So I always say move forward. Keep moving forward. All right. Where were we? Okay. <laughs> the red flags for dating a widower. If they want to get you in bed too quickly, back off, okay? You don't want them envisioning their spouse, you know, when... If they can't define what they want, if they're still living in vagueness, which is, like, there's no judgment there, it just means they're still in pain. Sometimes that means to disengage completely. No, no sight, no sound, no touch. All right, leave, leave minor children out of it until there's a ring and a date, please. Please, 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 please. Family members, uh, adult children, give it six months of exclusive dating, all right? Six months, preferably a year for ch adult children, um, but six months for, you know, friends and, um, and maybe, you know, coworkers or whatever, so. Okay, so the reason being is because if all your friends have known and family, friends, family, coworkers, everyone in your life, if they of all they've known is your spouse, all right, it's in their heads too. And your relationship with them involves your spouse. So if you're bringing someone new on the scene, it's really, really important a to have inform them of the death. That's that's key. Whoever is related to you, who's in your life to some degree, who has been in the last five years, please involve them with the grieving process, the funeral, inform them in a respectful way so they at least know, okay? The last thing you want to do is keep all of that hidden or withheld from key people in your life, which is typically family, and then bring someone on the scene. They have not gone through the stages of loss, too. Granted, of course, it's not as intense as yours, but they have to deal and process with the loss as well. So please be fair. You're going to have a successful reintegration if you go through that. Be 
fill your garden, fill your backyard with all of the beautiful things that you love to do and that, that makes your soul sing, okay? Even if it's just rejoicing and, and honoring them for a year. There's a lot of beauty in that. There really is. It's, just, it's, it's a very special time in your life. And don't speed it up. Let it take its own pace in its own time. And then reevaluate after six months. Say, hey, you know, what are, how much longer do I want to grieve? Sometimes grieving is a choice. And a good therapist is going to help you out with that. Okay? Well, I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to make this video too long. Okay? So, um, our next video is going to be uh, dating someone with a drug addiction. And we know how hard that is. It's going to be a short video, okay, because it's kind of painful. You guys have a lovely day. Meanwhile, please do something loving for yourself.